Hi guys, this is RN Daily Dose, formerly as Indai RN, and here I am to give you some helpful tips to maximize your study for the exam. And before we're going to start, please don't forget to click like, comment, and subscribe on my channel, especially if you are new. Free World Questions the nurse working in an extended care facility transcribes a prescription from the healthcare provider for a single daily dose of 150 mg of ranitidine. This is to be taken orally at bedtime for treatment of gastroesophageal reflux disease. Of the following prescriptions, which one is transcribed correctly? 1. Ranitidine 150 mg daily by mouth. 2. Ranitidine 150 mg per os cages. 3. Ranitidine 150 mg po QD nightly, 4. Ranitidine 150 mg PO at bedtime. Answer. 4. Ranitidine 150 mg PO at bedtime. Explanation. The nurse has correctly transcribed the prescription using approved abbreviations and standard terminology. Option 1, the abbreviation MIG signifies microgram. This option is incorrect as the medication is to be given daily in units of milligrams and it must be taken specifically at bedtime. Option 2, the abbreviation per os is interpreted as by mouth. The United States Pharmacopeia Institute for Safe Medication Practices Medication Error Reporting Program recommends that per os not be used as it may be read mistakenly as left eye. It equally recommends that the abbreviation GIS not be used as it may be misinterpreted as cur or every hour, leading to a potential medication administration error. Option 3, the abbreviation MIG signifies microgram, making this option incorrect. The abbreviation QD is on the do not use list of the Joint Commission National Patient Safety Goals. It may be mistakenly read as GID four times daily, which may cause a serious medication administration error. Educational Objective Using approved abbreviations when transcribing healthcare provider prescriptions promotes client safety and prevents potential medication administration errors. Common abbreviations per OS, pages, QD can result in errors and should not be used. A postoperative client with obesity and diabetes mellitus has an abdominal wound and is at risk for poor wound healing. Which interventions would the nurse include in the plan of care to prevent wound dehiscence? Select all that apply. 1. Administer docuzate orally, daily. 2. Administer on Dancitron for Peren for nausea. 3. Apply an abdominal binder. 4. Implement caloric restriction to promote weight loss. 5. Monitor blood sugar to maintain tight glucose control. Answers. 1. Administer docuzate orally, daily. 2. Administer on Dancitron for Peren for nausea. 3. Apply an abdominal binder. 5. Monitor blood sugar to maintain tight glucose control. The edges of a surgical wound may fail to approximate or they may separate due to a partial or total separation of the skin and tissue layers. This condition is known as dehiscence and is a complication of wound healing. Factors associated with dehiscence include conditions that impair circulation, tissue oxygenation, and wound healing egg, diabetes, smoking, obesity, advanced age, malnutrition, infection, steroid use and cause mechanical stress on the wound egg, straining to cough, vomit, defecate. Interventions to prevent surgical wound dehiscence include administering stool softeners such as docuzate kolachi to prevent straining during defecation and alleviate constipation caused by postoperative immobility and avoid opioid pain medications option 1. 
An adult client is admitted with back pain and found to have a metastatic tumor on the spine. The healthcare provider HCP explains that the client has few months to live and is likely to become totally paralyzed below the waist soon. The next day, the client tells the nurse of wanting to be discharged despite the HCP's recommendation that the client stay a few more days. Which is the most appropriate initial response by the nurse? 1. I understand your desire to leave, but it would be very risky. 2. I will ask the palliative care nurse to talk with you to help clarify your care goals. 3. I will let the HCP know that you want to be discharged and do everything I can to make it happen. 4. Tell me more about your need to leave the hospital. Answers. 4. Tell me more about your need to leave the hospital. Explanation. Knowing that this client has just received bad news with a limited prognosis, the nurse should anticipate that the client's urgent request for discharge may be due to concerns about needing to complete unfinished, unfinished business while still functioning. Examples of end-of-life business include concerns about family, finances, business responsibilities, and dealing with property and possessions. To get more information, the nurse should assess the client's concern and the motivation behind the request, by asking an open-ended question, such as, tell me more about, it is important to gain the client's trust, to actively listen, and to avoid immediately jumping to problem solving during this. Assessment Option 4. With the information gained from the assessment, the nurse will be able to problem solve with the client while intervening and advocating as appropriate.